All right, I'm uh, Justin McDougall here with the uh, Apprenticeship Program Builder Association in North Central Florida. We're here at an accredited training site at Santa Fe College. Uh, we're going to talk to you about some power tools that you'll see on the job site. We're going to start with some drills. Um, important thing for all the safety tools that we're going to talk about today, like in this particular drill itself, is actually has a cord. So when that cord is plugged in, this is a live tool, okay? So it's very dangerous if it's plugged in. Batteries are the same way. Battery, just treat it just like it's a cord. If this thing is plugged in, this tool has power. We also have some nail guns we're gonna talk about too where the air hose would actually be the power. Um, these are different types of drills. This is a right angle drill. A lot of this is used for drilling through heavy materials, a lot of lumber, things like that. This is an actual adjustable drill. A couple things on this. It is adjustable. Um, you can switch the things from hammer drill to a regular drill to actually just screwing in a drill. The numbers on the top also mean something on here. It's the adjustment of the torque. So the higher number on the drill itself, the higher the torque. So if you're drilling in you know, big fasteners, things like that, you would need the higher torque on these. The impact drill, these things are pretty tough. They can drill um, through a lot of different stuff, a lot of different fasteners. This is a reciprocating saw, also known as a sawzall. Again, this is a battery operated tool. So if there's a battery in it, it does have power and can cut you, okay? So if you're adjusting the blade, taking the blade out, you wanna make sure that you have the battery out of it. This right here, this is a jigsaw. A couple things that are important with the jigsaw and even the reciprocating saw is the type of blade that you're using. You wanna be using, this would be your, um, this would be a wood blade. Um, this is actually a, one of the blades that you can cut through wood and you can actually cut through a little bit of metal. So this is used a lot of times if you have to cut two by fours out that have nails in it, things like that, that would be the right blade for that. Jigsaw, same thing, the blade that's in it right now, this blade is actually a hardy blade, used for cutting fiber cement siding, also known as hardy board. In my hand right here is another blade that would be used for that. This blade would actually be used for cutting aluminum or fiberglass. So making sure that you have the right blade in um, for the right job or for whatever material it is you're cutting, okay? Um, this is circular saws. Um, also known, some people call them skill saws too. Um, again, making sure your power's out if you're changing the blade or anything. Typically, these are seven and a half inch blades. A couple things that you can do with the circular saw or you need to know with the circular saw, it is adjustable, so you can adjust it to whatever the depth of the wood is that you're cutting. You also have on here where you can actually adjust the degree of what you're cutting. So if you wanted to cut something at a 45 degree angle, you would also have that adjustment that you can make with that, okay? Important thing, making sure um, when you're not using these tools too and they're laying around that you are unplugging them so somebody doesn't come by and get hurt. Different types of blades for these two. This is actually a wood blade. This is actually made for rough lumber. So if you are cutting fine lumber, you'd have a lot more teeth like a 40 tooth blade or something along those lines to where you wouldn't rip apart the lumber. This one over here, same saw, but it has a seven and a quarter inch hardy blade in it for cutting fiber cement siding. Next, we're gonna talk about nail guns. Um, it's an extremely um, efficient tool, um, saves you a ton of time on a job site, but also very dangerous, okay? All right, these nail guns are set to where they cannot shoot until this piece is actually engaged. That's a safety that's used on the tool. This is never to be disassembled or used in any other way. Different types of nailers. This right here is called a coil nailer. Right now it's got um, 12 penny nails in it. You can use different sizes in this. It's important to know what sizes that you can fit in each nailer. Um, and it's important that you have the right kind of nails because if you have the wrong one, they can jam up, they can shoot, somebody could get hurt, um, you know, or it might fire or, or, or ruin the gun itself, okay? Uh, there's a brad nailer. It shoots a lot of different, different sizes of trim nails. Um, again, knowing the right gauge of the nail and everything, it's always on the side, usually typically on the side of the gun. If it's not, you can find it in the operator's manual. Um, also another trim nailer, this is an angled stick nailer. You can also get these in framing nails. You can also have the stick nails in it. Again, knowing what size nails and everything that you need to use. So there's a safety on this one. They're all a little bit different, but they all pretty much work the same.
And with nail guns, your power is going to be your air going in. So if you're working on a nail gun or some nails get jammed up, you want to make sure that you take the air off first before you try to do anything. And you always want to shoot a couple drops of oil in these before you use them every time. This is a miter saw, um, also known as a chop saw. This is a very effective tool They're used by carpenters a lot, a lot of times for cutting even uh, rough framing or they're doing finished work, uh, if you're doing trim work, things like that. Um, this one in particular um, is a really nice saw because it's adjustable in several different ways. You can actually change the angle of your cut. Um, you can go all the way to a uh, 45 this way um, and, and make your cut, um, or you can actually adjust this part here and adjust your cut in that way. Um, this one also has adjustable bars, so it comes out so you can cut larger dimension lumber all the way back. Um, has the guard, all saws you want to make sure have their guards, um, and obviously you don't want to stick your fingers in the blades. Some things that you'd see, um, trim, so if we're cutting trim, said this is also used for finished work, uh, finished carpentry, so we can also make cuts like this, cuts like this if we have angles, so if you see this one's actually cut at an angle, with an angle, with a bevel cut to the actual piece itself. Uh, what you have here is a, a bench grinder. Um, things that are important with the bench grinder safety wise, making sure that the guards are on. Um, and you also want to make sure that these are no more than an eighth inch of a, out from, from what you're actually working with. These are used for um, several different things. Um, one of the things that we use them here for in the shop is actually to sharpen some of our lathe tools and things like that.